Recall in the end of the last section how the author has said that true love is likened to summer, specifically to the season of May. There's a famous madrigal of now is the month of Maying when merry lads are playing, tra la 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 la. And there's a sense in May of, of everything opening up and the, the world coming back to life after a long winter. It's hard to conceive what this might have been like for the medieval mind. You see, for us in our post-enlightenment era, when it's winter outside, we go in, we turn on the heat, maybe put on a fire log and watch CNN or ESPN or something on the telly. Uh, for them, that wasn't really a possibility. When it was wintertime, it was cold, and it was cold everywhere. These castles, these vast, drafty caverns of stone got really frigid. And you would be inside normally with as many clothes on as possible and huddled around a fire if you could afford a fire. And you'd try to put tapestries on the walls and rugs out in order to make sure that things stayed as warm as possible. And you really didn't venture much into these large cavernous areas of the castle or outside for that matter because it was just so unpleasant. But come the time of spring when everything starts budding and the like and the ice melts away and the snow melts away and days start warming up, it was a very happy time. And by the time you get to May, when everything is really uh, just sprouting out and the grass is green and the birds are flying and everything's just frolicking everywhere and uh, the, 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 the young son hath his cause iran, as Chaucer points out. Um, well, it's that period of time when people would come out of their houses and they would do things outdoors as much as possible because you wanted to get out in that sun and feel the warmth on your face. And it was also during that time when people began to uh, have uh, liaisons and romance with one another. And so the author has compared true love, that sense of, of joy and happiness and, and, and love for someone else, to that period of May, that season of summertime, May, before it's gotten too old sometime around uh, late July and August, certainly not winter when it's cold. And it's at this time, at the beginning of our section, where uh, Guinevere goes out a maying with her court. She's happy to be out of the castle and she's out frolicking and frisking about with her courtiers uh, without a care in the world. But of course um, there is still care in the world and uh, that's why she lands in trouble in this opening section. Because there's a knight, Meliagrance, who as it says has loved her for a long time and has kept his eye on her but for fear of Lancelot has not wanted to do anything. Not for fear of Arthur, by the way, notice. It's not that Arthur is a deterrent to Meliagrance. Meliagrance would gladly be the paramour of Guinevere if, if, if Lancelot were not there, because Arthur seems to be almost a dupe by this point. He's almost like marginalized. He's on the sidelines. But Meliagrance doesn't want to, to meddle with Guinevere because Lancelot is her paramour, and he, and he doesn't want to encroach on that territory because Lancelot's so powerful. But it does indicate to some degree that there's this constant tension, even in the civilized world, even in this world of knights that have agreed to be brothers in the round table, in this world where war has been converted to jousting, we still get a seething rivalry that occurs between these characters, these military, these martial men. And, as Mallory points out, the main cause of that seething rivalry has to do with girls has to do with women folks, uh, that the love for somebody like Guinevere is not limited to somebody like Lancelot. It actually uh, springs up in the heart of other knights like Meliagrance. And Meliagrance, who for some time has been waiting, biding his time, hoping that he'll have a chance with Guinevere, finally slips the leash and decides to do something himself. And so what does he do? Naturally, he kidnaps her. He, he stalks her and he kidnaps her which is the, the psychopathic version of romance, if you will. Meliagrance steals her and all her ladies and takes the, them to his castle. And uh, we get a sense here that the guy is, is, is he's really, he's kind of desperate. Um, and Lancelot goes to save her, but Meliagrance has laid a trap for Lancelot, hoping that Lancelot will come and save her. He's sort of like snidely whiplash, moo ha 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 I'm going to get you. Uh, and Lancelot on his way to save her has his horse killed uh, beneath him and he, he, he voids the horse and he 
fights against the bandits that attack him, but his horse is dead and he can't get to save Guinevere. He can't arrive there on time. So what does he do? Well, in practical-minded uh, parlance, he hires a guy to take him to uh, the castle of Meliagrance. And it's a, it's a cart uh, that he jumps into, the cart of a, of a gatherer of sticks, um, a, a peasant, basically. And he, he rides to the castle in this cart of the peasant. And he, gets, he goes there and he delivers Guinevere and he forces Meliagrance to, uh, to, to surrender and beg for mercy. But Guinevere gets really kind of mad. How dare you show up in a cart? Well, for us, that's, again, this is mystifying. What's wrong with riding in a cart? I mean, Guinevere, for goodness sake, Lancelot just got there and saved your, your, your keister. Um, why would you be so upset about the fact that he's driving in a cart? Again, this is a cultural thing because knights were so supposed to be noble and honorable and virtuous and they, they were dignified and, and they, they never did anything that was base or ignoble. In their culture, a man would ride in a cart if he was a criminal or a peasant, but normally criminals, especially murderers, were put into these carts and they were paraded through the streets to the gallows to be hanged. And so and people would throw fruit and food at them and jeer at them. And so for Lancelot to ride in a cart shows either that he's a base peasant or that he is like a criminal. And that's what Guinevere says to him. She says, you've embarrassed me. You've you brought down the whole uh, image of knighthood. But Lancelot, in some ways, is in the right in that he's, um, he's saved Guinevere. He's protected her and, and put his own honor at risk to save her. Well, Mallory, in putting these stories together, uh, is taking a story from here and a story from there, and he pastes them all together. And so he pastes together as well uh, a final story where Meliagrance discovers that Lancelot has been wounded and he discovers the blood of Lancelot on the pillow of, of Guinevere and he accuses Guinevere of being unfaithful to Arthur. This is, uh, Meliagrance can't have Guinevere and therefore he's going to accuse her and get her arrested for treason and, and burned at the stake because if he can't have her, nobody's going to have her. And he accuses her of this uh, adultery, of this treason, and all the other knights say, no, 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 that can't be true. But then when they see the blood, they too say, oh, somebody's been here. And obviously she is untrue to Arthur. Um, this is again taking a story uh, from the French uh, Chrétien de Troyes, who does a, a story like this, and Mallory just takes it and puts it in the story here, Melia Grance being the agent. But what it also seems to show is that there's this, this noose almost tightening around Guinevere and, and Lancelot. Their foibles, their, their affair that's gone on for so long is getting excessive. It's, it's as though other people are finding out about it, it's causing more crises, and eventually it's going to cause problems that, that erupt into this civil war. So it's no longer just the dalliance of young people. Their love is approaching winter. Their, their love is approaching uh, late fall. And consequently, their, their love is also making Camelot approach winter. The death, not just of the romance between, our, between the Lancelot and Guinevere, but the death of all the knights of the round table and the round table itself.